Hey everybody, today I'm showing you three cool chestnut boards. These are smart chess boards that connect to Lee Chess and Chess.com. These two are two smart boards with piece recognition and they work with your iOS or Android device. They also support Chess 960. Now this one is the Chestnut Evo. It has a 12.3 inch screen on the side and it doesn't require you to actually use a smartphone. So you can actually use the Android tablet that's on the side to go to leechess.com or chess.com and play games. It has a trainable AI engine, which is the plus side of this. And it also has Lita Chess Zero, Maya and Stockfish. So let's see what you get. So you get this board, that's the Android tablet on the side. The USB-C charging port. Now you just connect this to Wi-Fi, you go online, you can download engines, you can analyze your games, you can play games, you can take training drills. This also has a multi-color LED system that gives you feedback on your moves. It supports Chess 960, so it's very similar to those, except it doesn't actually need a smartphone. Now, this is the Chestnut Pro. It's one of the most gorgeous boards that I've ever had. And it's very similar in size to the classic DGT chess board that you see at tournaments. It's a lot smarter though, in the sense that it connects to all kinds of different applications. It also connects to Leeches and Chess.com. I'm sure you can do a lot of that stuff with DGT Chess as well. But this is just a little bit more straightforward right out of the box. You can easily connect and start playing. It has a smart piece recognition. It knows which piece exactly you are picking up every time. It also supports Chess 960 without any plugins or any extra stuff. It's a 55 by 55 centimeter board. So this is the Chestnut Pro when set up. It has these beautiful pieces. You also have this interface with the USB-C port. Lights that give you feedback when you're connected. These buttons, turn it on. So when the blue light comes on, you can connect this to your tablet and you hear a beep when it's connected. This is all done through the Chestnut app. If you compare the pieces between the Evo and Chestnut Pro, you can see a difference. The Evo is more compact, but it also has a lot of cool technology with AI on, but this board is more for tournaments, for instance, and it's actually great for analysis. If you want to analyze your game on a real big board. Now, if you watch a few other videos that I've done, you can see that you can use these pieces interchangeably between these boards. So that's nice to have as an option. Last but not the least, this is the Chestnut Air. It's the most compact board in this series, but it has a lot of cool features that you can find in Chestnut Pro. It's, a very, it's pretty much identical actually, except that this has hidden LEDs and that doesn't, but at the same time, that's much smaller so you can take it with you around. So while this is 55 by 55, that's much smaller. At the same time, it is as good as far as the features and it's portable so you can take it with you anywhere. Now you have the same interface for connecting it. Just have to hold this button and then connect it to your device. And this is the USB charging port. Now the difference, the main one that I can see between these boards other than the size and pieces is that you have these LED signs here, whereas this is completely hidden under the, underneath the surface of the board. So you can't actually notice anything here. You, you, if you look at this board and don't know that if it's smart, you probably wouldn't guess that it has an LED underneath to show the moves. But this board, you can probably tell because of these dots here, but that's again, not a big issue or a distraction. It's just a different feature. So the main difference between these two, I would say that it's just for different audience in a sense that this is much more affordable, more accessible to people and has still all the cool features that you need, leechess.com, chess.com, and also chess 960 games. This is just bigger. It has, higher quality pieces and it's a standard tournament size so you can actually use it for serious play against others and to analyze your games with stockfish and track and keep keep a record of your games so i've covered the chestnut air on this channel a lot you may want to go and check those videos out in this video i'm going to put chestnut pro versus the chestnut evo different engine 
and let's see how that turns out. Before I put the chestnut air board away, I just want to show you the difference between the size. You can always measure these boards and compare that way. A better way would be to actually put them on top of each other to see how different they are actually in size. So this is the Chestnut Air. This is the Chestnut Evo. Bottom is the Chestnut Pro. Obviously that's much larger than the other two. But the Chestnut Air, the funny part is that it looks like it actually covers this side. So if you put it, it's almost about that size. And then you have this extra Android tablet, which is 12.3 inches. So that's something to keep in mind. This doesn't have those dots here. This has a different multicolor LED system and also has a trainable AI engine. Whereas you can think of your Chestnut Air as the entry level board in the series. And it has all the smart features that you need as far as connectivity to different platforms and also working with iOS and Android. It's just a whole lot cheaper and more compact than the Chestnut Pro. So you just go here and just try to connect this. It takes a couple of seconds and you hear a beep. There you go. So it's not connected. With the Chestnut Evo, everything happens here. So you just have to go to a bot match, choose the engine that you want. Let's say I want VHS zero and then choose the time and you're set. So I'm gonna choose a stockfish here. Just let's see how well it can perform. It has a max rating of 2850. Let's go. Seven, six. The neat thing about Chestnut Evo is that it also has voice, so that makes it much easier to enter the moves if you're doing these types of games.
So at this point, for some reason, they started repeating. Can import the game. If I go all the way here, is it really drawn? It shouldn't be a draw. So I don't know why exactly they repeated. For some reason, a stockfish wasn't going for the win. So I don't know exactly what happened there. As you can see here, it says zero zero because of the repetition. Whereas if you go back here and if it, instead of doing that, if it went that way, after this move, for instance, if it went that way, gave a check, it says negative 4.6. So that's an interesting development here. It had enough time, so I don't exactly know what a stockfish was thinking, uh, just accepting the draw, but that's how it turned out. I'm going to do more videos of this in the future. Let's see how those games turn out. For more information, please go to gadgetify.com. Also, youtube.com at Gadgetify. Thanks for watching.